Unity's Editor GUI is such a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's very powerful, even allowing you to make entire games in the editor itself, for some reason. But on the other hand, trying to make the slightest of changes or escaping the boundaries by even a little results in junkiness and a lot of suffering. Because I use it for actual products, I had to get quite good at it. But recently, or as we say on this channel half a year ago, I had to not only make a window that is usable, but also one that is very simple to use for beginners. So allow me to tell my story of Sad. Once there was a man named Etra, who was using the wrong engine. However, one day he learned about his mistakes and installed Unity, only to find that there was nothing there. Let me just add this funny green screen man here. He then installed Unity's starter assets just to realize that in the Urban Dictionary they are the definition of a minimal viable product. So he decided to make his own, where you have a larger level, more features, and a window for customizing your player. And this is where I come in. This is how the window used to look. As you can see, I cannot play Minecraft in it, so it had to go. The window was separated into individual sections, which we were able to navigate by pressing Next or Previous, which was located at the top. Okay. I decided to start from scratch mainly because I was too scared to see what satanic rituals had to be performed in order to get that thing working. Instead of doing whatever this is, I decided to put navigation in its own separate space at the bottom of the window. It's nothing too special, there are two buttons, a progress bar and this separation line, which I had to generate myself by making a custom style and generating a one by one texture from a color. I may or may not have stolen some code from QASIC for that one, but before we continue, allow me to ruin your day. In Unity, there are two ways of drawing editor UI. One is called GUI, and the second one GUI layout. The first one forces you to calculate the positions of each element manually, while the second one does that for you. And you can see how well that works here. GUI layout not only takes into consideration how many elements are placed where, but also what are their contents. So to avoid this mess, I had to use this simple trick to switch to GUI and calculate the positions on my own. And for the rest of the window, I decided to separate the wizard into four different pages. The first one just contains some random text and a bunch of links that at first all went to the same page. However, However, the second page is where things start to get interesting. This is where you select your gameplay type and player model. As you can see, these buttons contain quite a lot of things, so I was unable to just use GUI layout. Instead, I just used that little trick from earlier and calculated the positions of each button manually. However, you might notice, they don't really behave as buttons. Well, that's mainly because they're not. These are actually toggles wearing a button skin, because we can do that in Unity. Except that not really, because the buttons didn't want to stretch vertically. Turns out that the button skin in the editor's stylus class isn't actually the skin that the editor normally uses. So instead of using this new and clean solution, I decided to create a new skin and name it Button. And it worked like a charm. Thanks Unity, I'm sure this makes sense for someone. And as for the pictures, I've generated them myself in Unity by using this nifty script which I stole from someone a long time ago and kept using in literally every single one of my projects. And finally at the bottom, we have the model selection screen. This one was actually generated using GUI layout because for the first time in this video, it actually did its job right. Well, it wasn't all smooth sailing, I'll spare you the details, but just know that min height or stretch width don't really do what they seem to do. The only other gripe I had was with this selection to the magismo, or as Unity calls it, a pop-up. Not sure where they got that idea, but okay. I wanted it to be slightly taller than usual, and just like previously with the button, it didn't want to stretch. So I modified its style and it seemed to work, sort of. So to get it working like I wanted to, I've replaced it with a button using its skin that when press creates a new generic menu containing a list of every model that then triggers a method to change it. It's just a button. Why did it take 40 lines of code to work? Throughout this whole project I've been using these weird methods for calculating the positions of almost every element. Well, these methods don't exist. I've created them myself for QASIC quite a long time ago and copied them to this project for the sake of sanity. Looking back at some of my old UI code, you can see that without them, things get quite ugly really fast. The funniest thing I found was that even Unity's own code uses an equivalent of these methods. So if you want to make editor UI, go check out my script on GitHub or wait until the end of the video. The remaining two pages don't look that special, but behind the scenes, they do quite a lot of work. Allow me to explain to you how this asset works. The player uses a system called abilities for managing its abilities. They range from walking, walking faster, walking lower, jumping. This allows users to customize their player to their heart's content, depending on their needs. And turns out that these abilities are just normal components that derive from a special class. And with this knowledge, I use reflections to get a handle on all of them to populate this screen. Reflections, to put it simply, is a way of browsing code via code. But some abilities are only available for a specific gameplay type. And the way we tell that is non-existent? Okay, something's not right. How come the old window knows which one is which? Well, I've decided to finally open its code and... Uh, Hmm. So instead of looking at code, the old window searched for files to evaluate their type based on their naming. And the way it determined which ability was gameplay specific was by checking if the script's name contained the words TPS or 
FPS. This worked, but as you can tell, it wasn't pretty. Using some weird syntax in the class's name isn't really that intuitive for other programmers, so I've opted for using an attribute instead, which is more in line with how things are usually done in C And with all of those pages, I was able to re-add the ability to create a player and add the ability to modify it. And it seems like we're done. But of course I wasn't done yet. I still have to implement other quality of life features which are way too boring to explain in this video. But just so you know, this window is as stable as the power in my neighborhood. But you might be wondering, why is one of the most essential systems in Unity so neglected and how come that Unity aren't doing anything about it? Well, that's mainly because they are doing something about it. A couple of years ago, Unity released the UI Toolkit. It's essentially a package that creates UI based on its own language similar to HTML and CSS. I remember that at first I really didn't like it as most of the nice looking UI is made for commercial products and requiring users to install an additional package just to get it working wasn't that great. However, installing thousands of packages is becoming more frequent and their UI tools are getting better and better. I personally still haven't tried it, although I looked at some tutorials. I'm not a fan of certain aspects of it, but it seems like in the future, making a good looking UI why might be less of a hassle. But as it stands for today, all I can say is... That is cool window I made for QA sick.